Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. In this video, I want to prepare a recipe that I've been looking at for a long time, and I mean years. It's Italian chicken croquettes. I've never made these before. They fascinate me. I think they would be really good to eat and also really fun to make. So that's what I want to do today. And let's first, as usual, get into the ingredients that I'm going to be using. I have here two large potatoes. They weigh between 12 and 14 ounces each, which is about 340 to 400 grams. I've got salt for boiling my potatoes. Four slices of bread. This might seem a little bit weird. These are actually bagels. What I do is I take a bagel and if I can use something like this, a dense bread, rather than that store-bought bread that's more air than it is bread, if I can take a bagel, I take it and I cut it into three pieces like this. This middle piece with the crust trimmed off is my bread slices. These top and bottom pieces, what I did with those is I put them in a 225 degree oven for an hour and a half. And then once they were thoroughly dried out, I ran them through a food processor and that's where I got my unseasoned breadcrumbs for my recipe today. The nice thing about making your own breadcrumbs is if you want to use seasoned breadcrumbs, you can season them the way you like. So I have about four slices of bread. Again, I'm using the center cut from bagels for them with the crusts removed. One cup, which is about 240 milliliters of cold milk. Three quarters of a pound, which is about 340 grams of chicken meat. You can use white meat or dark meat. I'm using dark meat because I prefer the flavor of dark meat. Ten sprigs of Italian or flat leaf parsley. I'm going to be using the leaves only. One medium clove of garlic. Two large eggs. As far as what a large egg is here in the USA, mine weigh about two ounces each or 55 grams in the shell one quarter cup, which is about one ounce or 28 grams of Parmesan or Romano cheese. I'm using Romano, salt and fresh ground pepper to taste. One cup of my unseasoned bread crumbs that weighs about 115 grams. Eight cups, this isn't eight cups here, but I'm gonna be using about eight cups, two liters of vegetable oil. This is corn oil that I'm gonna be using for frying my chicken croquettes. And then finally for garnish, I've got a lemon. I'm going to be just garnishing these with lemon wedges on the side. So those are the ingredients that I'm using. I have heated some water to boiling on the stove. I want to get my potatoes started here. I don't think I need to show most of you how to peel and chop potatoes, but and then I just want to cut these up. Some people boil their potatoes first and then peel them. My mom always chopped hers. And then boiled them. My potatoes are boiling. So I'm going to chop my parsley, show off my knife skills, I guess. I do have to chop the chicken in a food processor. I could, I suppose, chop my parsley at the same time in the food processor, but what if I have to chop a lot to get the parsley chopped down? I don't want to over chop my chicken, so I decided to play it safe and chop my parsley with a knife. If you don't have a chef's knife, you'll want to invest in one. They make this work go very, very efficiently. All right, that should be good enough. out here. And there's my chopped parsley. 
another step I need to do is to get my bread soaking in my one cup of milk. I'm going to be turning that around, mixing that up, making sure it gets evenly soaked. If I had homemade chicken stock, I'm out, unfortunately, but if I had homemade stock, I would substitute the stock for the milk because it would, I'm sure it would give it more flavor. The original recipe calls for milk, and that's fine. This has to sit in the soaking liquid now for about 10 minutes. Every few minutes I'm going to be flipping these over so I get the bread evenly soaked with the milk. I have to mash my potatoes. If you don't have a rice, a potato ricer, this is a great little gadget. Well, little. It's pretty good size. It's got a bin in there, whatever this is called, a hopper. And then it has this screen in the bottom. Mine came with three each with a different size set of holes in it. Basically you put your potatoes inside like that. I'm going to move this to this side because it'll be easier. And then you just squeeze the potatoes. Look at the water come out. I'm going to drain that. Okay, then you just squeeze that and push the potatoes through. One thing I don't like about my potato ricer is that when I lift up this bottom part, oftentimes this inner part rather, the bottom screen comes up with it sometimes and it's a nuisance to have to work with. All right, there's the last of my potatoes. So my potatoes are riced and that's ready to go. I assembled my food processor here. I, my chicken, I cut into strips to make it a little bit easier to chop up in the food processor. And as I always do, I put a little barrier in here so that I can keep the lid clean. One less thing to wash. And I'm just going to chop this up until the chicken is fairly finely chopped. That should be okay. I don't want to reduce it to a mush. Yeah, that's got a nice texture to it, so that should be fine. To start the mixing, I have my rice potatoes in a large bowl. I'm going to add my ground up chicken. And my parsley. And I want to put this on a rubber mat so it doesn't make a lot of noise. I got to thinking a pastry cutter might work better for this. Certainly is working better to get it all over the counter on the floor. Okay, I'm going to get my hands into that in a little bit. I'm going to be adding next my cheese and my eggs. I remember someone on the internet saying, all oh, those Americans, they add cheese to everything. Well, this is an Italian recipe. It's not an American recipe. It was in an Italian cookbook. Okay, in this next step, I want to squeeze the excess moisture out of my bread here. And then just kind of crush that up into my mixture. Oh, I should have put an apron on. I'm getting it on my shirt. All right, that should be good enough. And now I want to break this up and get my fingers in there. It 
you could do this, I suppose, in a mixer. But you'd have chicken sticking to the blades or the tines of your mixer. And that is ready to start forming into croquettes. If at this point your mixture is too wet, you can, and I might just do it, add some breadcrumbs to it to stiffen it up a little bit. I've run into that before with other recipes. The mixture ends up too moist, and so putting in breadcrumbs just brings it together enough that I have a fairly stiff mixture with which to make my, in this case, my croquettes. Now that I've got my mixture fairly well mixed, I do want to add some seasoning to it. So I'm going to add my garlic, salt, and pepper. Here's a study question for you that you can work on while I'm doing this. How do you taste for salt and pepper when you've got raw chicken in there? I'll leave you to think about that. I'm going to add maybe half a teaspoon of salt for a start. And one more time, mix this up. That gives me a final feel of my mixture. And I've decided I am going to add a few tablespoons of breadcrumbs here. I want this to be a little bit stiffer. If I had had less water in the potatoes, this might have been a little bit drier. Okay. Now I've got to heat up some oil so I can begin shaping and cooking my croquettes. My next step is to start rolling, shaping these into my croquettes and then rolling them in my breadcrumbs. But you see me holding a fork. I asked you earlier, how do you test this for salt when it's raw chicken? Well, get a little bit of your filling and dip this in your hot oil and then cook it for a minute or two until it starts to nicely brown, then taste it for salt. I did that. My filling is, I think, perfect. And it tastes better than I thought it was going to taste. You know, sometimes I surprise myself. So I've got a pair of spoons here. I'm going to just use my spoons to shape a croquette, kind of roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then just gently release that and drop it into my breadcrumbs. Roll that around, shape it like so. And that is ready for frying. My oil is heated up to 375 degrees, so I want to drop these into this oil and cook them until they're nicely brown. They should be a nice golden, even orange color. To get these into the oil, I don't want to just drop them in there because I'm afraid of splash back and burning myself. So I'm going to use a spider to lower them in there. Lower it in. And then keep going until all of my filling here is used up. Naturally, I don't want to crowd my pan with too many of my croquettes. So I'll get a few of them going as they brown and rise to the top. I'll move some to a plate lined with paper towels so that they can drain. And then I'll continue working. There they are. 
I got 33 out of there. I'm going to say on the recipe that you can get about three dozen. I made some of these a little large, so I think three dozen is reasonable. They're a nice, rich, golden brown color. There's my lemon wedges. The last step is to see how good these taste. There it is. Dying to taste one of these. Mmm. Very delicate flavor. Not a strong chickeny flavor. Not a strong cheese flavor. See, this is what I like. It's a nice, balanced flavor. Nothing comes to the fore. You can taste the chicken. You can taste the potatoes. You can taste the cheese, but everything is just delicately balanced. I think these are wonderful. The size of the lemon, I could imagine making like a honey mustard dipping sauce for them, or even like a yogurt flavored sauce, or a sauce made with yogurt. There's a lot you can do with these. So, there they are. Excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my Italian chicken croquettes. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.